all wait for me. I was just helping you practice patience. You remember, patience is waiting until later for what you want now. All this month, we've been learning how to wait with patience instead of complaining or getting angry. When you're hungry, but it's not dinner time yet, you can be patient. When you want to ask your mom a question, but she's in the middle of a phone call, you can be patient. When something happens to you that just doesn't make any sense, you can be patient and trust that God has a bigger plan. You know, baking is a great way to practice patience since you have to wait for your delicious treats to cook in the oven. And I have got another fun game for us to play today. It's called Cake Pop Challenge. Miss Denise and I will work together to make an adorable snowman cake pop. This sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. That's right. And of course, it wouldn't be any fun without a little twist. That's right. We can each only use one hand. So we're going to have to work together. And we will really have to be patient with each other to get this done. Oh my goodness. Are you ready? I am. <gasps> so here's what we got to do. First, we mix the frosting with the cake crumbs. Then, we will shape the cake pop into a beautiful, perfectly round ball. Finally, we will use the candy pieces to decorate our snowman's face with two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Friends, we need you to cheer us on. Are you ready? Let's mix. Alrighty, uh, here we pour go. Pour that in. Very good. Now, uh oh, uh oh. Here's the frosting. <laughs> if you. There's a little more in oh, here. Hold on, oh dear. There we go. <laughs> Teamwork. Team, that's what I was just going to say. All right, if you can hold the frosting. I can hold it. I'll scoop her out. How much frosting do you think we need? Oh, man, I bet we need a lot of it. Maybe I all of it. I love frosting. Who else loves frosting? Me, too. 
too. Mm. Oh my goodness. It smells nice. It does. Sweet. It's gonna look like a snowman with this white cake mix and so. white frosting. Ah, uh, I love making a snowman on a snowy day. Have you ever tried to cook with one hand before? Never. Never. Me neither. This is fun though. It is. All right, All right. you think we're good? I think so. So now comes the fun part. <laughs> we get to squish it. Okay, are so, you ready? Here, here we, we go. go. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh. that feels so funny. It smells so sweet, so good. Oh man, this is awesome. You should try this at home with your mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't do this without your mom or dad there. Yes, please don't. <laughs> All right. Kind of like we're playing with Play-Doh a little bit. Yeah. This is what it's starting to look like. Yeah, it's getting there. Do you think we can roll a ball yet? I don't know. I don't feel like it's getting there quite yet. How about I hold this and... Oh, you... that sounds good. And then I'll just there really get go. in there. Yeah. All right. How's it doing? Starting to make something. <laughs> All right. It's sticking to my gloves. I know. Would you like for me to pull it? Let's sure. <laughs> All right, maybe we can start. We might need to both okay. mold it together. Okay, this I'll might push. Be a little, this is quite a large cake pop. Maybe that take, is, that's push. true. Cake pops are little. Have true. you ever had a cake pop from oh, Starbucks? They're my favorite. I <laughs> they love are pretty yummy. cake pops. I think that's pretty good, though. I think so. Now, I think so. ready to decorate. Yes. Mm. All right, here we go. Should we open this up? Yep. Roll now we need up. to do two eyes and a nose. Hmm. Oh, I think the snowflakes would be cute. Oh, Eyes, what do you think? I think so too. Okay, ready? All right. Here they go. Okay. <laughs> that is awesome, we guys. Have eyes. eyes. Okay, now we need a nose. I'm going to pour it in your hand. All right. Okay. Here we go. Ready? You got it? I Wait a minute. There, there we there. go. Okay. Now we need a mouth. Okay, there's the nose. All do you right. want to switch it up for the mouth? Let's do that. Yeah, why don't we do. We can do gingerbread men for his Let's mouth. Let's do it. All, All right. right. Ready? Yep. And do you want to take them? I will do them. my best. Perfect. <laughs> oh, look. There, there we, we go. go. Great. This is really like Play-Doh. It sure is. Okay. Me... All right. This looks good enough to eat. Oh, All right. look at that. That looks like my snowman that I built this winter. Oh. <laughs> Here's our snowman. <laughs> Well, All right, Denise, I think it's time to get cleaned up. I think so, too. That was so much fun. It really was. <laughs> In today's story, we will hear about two siblings who did not work so well together. As I'm sure you already know, it can be really hard to be patient. How many of you have ever heard an adult say, just give me a minute, or it's almost ready? I'm not gonna lie, when I was a kid riding in the car with my parents, there was something I would always ask. Are we there yet? Me too, me too. I just couldn't wait to get where we were going. It's so hard. Every day, there are times when you have to wait your turn to use the tablet, to get your homework done. How about waiting in line? Uh, oh, I know. At lunch, at the library, yep. at the bus stop, at the store, Lines are everywhere. everywhere. The hardest one for me is waiting for the holidays, yeah. like for Christmas uh, or for my birthday. It's so hard to wait. Yes, we have lots of chances to use patience. But let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about what we can lose if we're not patient? That's what today's story is about. A long, long time ago, God made a special promise to a man named Abraham. God told Abraham that he would be the father of a great nation. Abraham had a son named Isaac. And our story today is about Isaac's two sons, Esau and Jacob. Let's watch our story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired 
by the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 24 through 34. When Abraham's son Isaac grew up, he married a girl named Rebecca, but it didn't seem as though they'd be able to have children. Please God, give us children. But God answered Isaac's prayers and Rebecca became pregnant with twins. Isaac, I'm pretty sure they're having a wrestling match in here. Oh, definitely boys. Rebecca asked God about the struggle she could feel. He told her, Two nations are in your body. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger one. When it was time for the babies to be born, they came out fighting. Esau was born first. He came out with a strong set of lungs and a head full of red hair. His brother Jacob was born moments later, still holding on to Esau's heel. How on earth did he manage that? The brothers shared the same birthday, but as they grew, that was about the only thing they had in common. Esau loved to roam far out into the wilderness. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Jacob preferred the comforts of home. The sun is so hot, I'll just take a little nap in the tent. Esau loved to hunt wild animals. That is one excellent wildebeest. Jacob preferred a different type of hunting. Not you, not you. Ha! <laughs> the perfect ripe honeydew melon. One fine morning, Esau headed out into the wilds in search of adventure and some nice juicy venison. <laughs> I'll feast tonight. But Esau went all morning without spotting a single rabbit. Ugh, should have packed a lunch. In the afternoon, he tracked a deer for hours but he missed his chance as the deer sprang away. Ah! At last, Esau headed for home, defeated. He was tired and irritated and so hungry he could eat an entire woolly mammoth. Must eat food. As Esau neared camp, a delicious smell wafted out to greet him. Food! Jacob had been home all day, resting and plucking his favorite herbs from his garden. A little coriander, some dill. As evening approached, Jacob used his savory herbs to whip up a tasty red lentil stew and a batch of fresh, buttery bread. This will crisp up nicely on the hot stones. By the time Esau had arrived in camp, Jacob's stew was simmered to perfection and the bread was hot and crusty. Food! Food! Esau lunged for the stew cauldron, ready to grab a bowl, but Jacob blocked his path. Not so fast. Step aside, I'm hungry. Clearly. Just let me have some of that red stew. Certainly. Esau tried to dive for the stew pot again. Ah, 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 ah. Just one itty bitty thing. What? Well, first, uh, Give me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. Esau spent more time listening to his stomach than his brain. So in that moment, his stomach won out. Look, I'm dying of hunger. If I die, those rights are pointless anyway. Now give me that stew. Esau sprang forward once more. I promise to give me your rights. Fine. Fine what? Fine, I promise. Promise what? I promise to give you my rights as the oldest. Cool. Help yourself. Jacob stepped aside as Esau hurled himself at the stew pot. Stew! Esau happily gorged himself on rich stew and fresh bread. But as his stomach filled up, he had time to stop and think again. Esau had just traded the rights of a lifetime for a meal that would only last him a few hours. I hope that was some really good stew. <laughs> but no matter how good that stew must have tasted, I bet Esau really regretted trading away his birthright to his brother Jacob. Mm. Jacob ended up playing a big part as the leader of his family in God's big story. Do you think it was worth his birthright? Oh, I don't think so either. But in the moment when Esau was tired, hungry, and impatient, he gave up something that was really important and valuable. Mm. Sometimes when we're impatient, there's a big cost. As a matter of fact, Jacob was a part of the family line that eventually led to Jesus. 
Because Esau was impatient, he missed out on all of that, even though it was originally his birthright. The next time you have something to wait for and that you really want, take a second to think. Think about what it could cost you if you're not patient. Remember, if you don't wait, it could cost you, and that's our bottom line today. It takes a lot of trust to wait for something you want right now. You have to trust God and believe that His timing is always perfect. That's right. Even when you can't understand why. Before we go today, let's say our Bible verse. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord, Psalm 27, 14. Let's say that together, Megan. Hey. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord, Psalm 27, 14. Friends, will you pray with me and ask God to help us be willing to wait? Here we go. God, we know that it can cost us when we're not willing to wait. We get impatient, like Esau. We forget to make the wise choice. And when that happens, we often have to face the consequences. Please help us to keep a clear head and stay patient. Please give us the strength to wait for the things we want now. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your family question of the week is, what could you miss out on mm. by not waiting? Wow. Don't forget, there's an activity listed below in the link. You can just click on that and fill that activity out with your family. All right. Well, I can't wait to see everybody again next week and see what are we going to be doing next week. We'll find out. Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Ooh, a marshmallow. Sure. Eat the mallow, miss out on something better. What do you mean? If you wait and don't eat that mallow until I return, then you will receive something even better than a mere measly mallow. Better than a marshmallow? <laughs> Not one bite. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. I don't think he can wait and resist eating that marshmallow, but if he can, I'm going to give him an entire bag of marshmallows. <laughs> All right, here we go. Count to ten. One, two, three, four. All right, let's go. <laughs> Where's the desk? Did you eat the desk? Um, uh, you ate the desk! I didn't eat the marshmallow! Oh. Everybody, I'm John and I'm Brandon and welcome to the so-and-so show you've been waiting a whole week to see this show Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. I know you won't be disappointed <laughs> Did somebody say manners? Uh, no. no I am Melinda manners and I can always tell when my help is needed I can sense when someone is being manly And when someone is not. Oh, oh yeah, all oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Chair. We're not so, yeah. <laughs> my dear boys, what seems to be the problem today? Uh, no, no problem. We're just trying to get the show rolling. So. Patience, my dear boys, patience. It's one of the most important manners. I wrote an entire symphony on patience once. Oh, is that <clears> right? Let, let's. <clears throat> <laughs> D 
Du, 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 du. Nice. Yeah, I feel like mm. I'm learning so much from that. Oh, that's just the tip of the ice cube. Oh, no, that's not the uh, one that... Uh, uh. If you want to be manly, don't speak out, just sit quietly. Don't correct or presume, just sit tight and listen to me. Now, I meant what I said about sitting tight. Shoulders back, boys. It is unmannerly to slouch. <clears throat> Better? So, uh, Melinda, now that you're here, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, so many things. There's nothing unmannerly about having fun, after all. I keep my favorite things with me at all times. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Hold this, please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. A ball for baskets. A screen flat for movies. And this electronic sewing box. Wow, you certainly do know how to have fun. How did you pull all of this out of that bag? I may be delicate in my manners, but I am a strong woman. Manners and strength are like peas and carrots. They go together like deserts and ferrets. How do deserts and ferrets go together? Now, my most favorite fun to have is the kind that you can really learn from. Ooh. Ooh. Let's play a little game I like to call Bake and Wait. Our preparations are complete. Now we simply need to insert the pan into the oven. And in 27 short minutes, we can enjoy some delicious light bulb heated balls of cookie dough. 27 minutes? Hey, this may take a while. You may want to speed through. Let's eat! Actually, now the cookies have to sit in the cooling chamber for five minutes. Oh, no, thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Wow! <laughs> it would be unmannerly for me to say I told you so. So I'll just sing it. Being patient is always right, but you didn't listen, for you're not so bright. It's Bible story time and Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's up today, Kellen? Well, today we're looking at something that happened in the very first book of the Bible. That's right. Genesis, specifically Genesis chapter 25. This is the story of two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau. It wasn't my fault. Jacob tricked me. Um, what's going on? You can't prove anything, Esau. Yes, I can. Tricky McTricker face. That's not my name. It should be. Okay, okay, slow down. I think we might need some kind of judge to handle this. You have just stepped into the courtroom of Judge Trudy. The cases are biblical. The people are historical. The courtroom is not real at all. This is Judge Trudy. Just to be clear, this courtroom did not appear in the Bible. Oh, I'll take it from here, Kellen. So, Esau says here in your case file that you were born first. So you got your family's rights and inheritance. Is that correct? That's correct. I was born first, this is my birthright, mine. Hmm. Well, a birthright is a really big deal. It means you'll get more of your father's wealth and property. 
and that you'll become leader of the family. Yeah, that's right. But Jacob, you stole the birthright from your older brother, correct? No, I did not steal it. He sold it to me, fair and square. The trickster, at it again. You were the one who made the trade. Order. I need to know the real story. Bailiff, roll the security footage. Jacob, quick, I'm insanely hungry. Feed me some of that stew. Sure, but first you have to sell me your birthright. Look, I'm dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me now? Promise me. Promise me you'll sell me your rights. Fine, I can't wait any longer. I promise to give you my birthright. Wait, Esau! Did you not even value your birthright? I was hungry. Oh, but you didn't have one bit of patience. You could have waited and eaten something else later. Let me ask you something. Was the stew worth it? It was okay. Tasteless, but for a moment. But your birthright would have affected generations. It seems to me, Esau, that your complaint against your brother is your own fault. I cannot rule in your favor. You made your choice. Court is adjourned. This has been Judge Trudy. Even though there's no way that was the real Jacob and Esau, Judge Trudy summed it up well. Esau did not value his rights as the firstborn son. Being impatient made him sell something that was worth more than we can imagine for the price of one little bowl of stew. Bummer. Seriously. You know, being impatient can actually cost you. Totally. When we're not patient, we rush in without thinking about the consequences. Oh, I know. I bent my tongue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I think we can avoid a lot of problems if we just pause and think before we act. There's a lot we can miss out on when we're not willing to wait. It's good to hear. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I think I've ended that today. Put that away, please. Sorry. Reveal the question. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Yeah, like when you eat snacks before dinner and then you're not hungry and it turns out to be your favorite meal. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, or you can miss out on spending time with your friends who are running late because you didn't want to wait for them. Or maybe something even more drastic like an Esau's case. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together and we'll see you next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon and this was The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. Keep going. Nice. We're really coming into it now. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for the big finish. Oh, I left the blowtorch off. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs>